Learning Living on the Cheap and Trying to Figure Out. Today I'm going to talk to you about my five financial regrets. Yep, apparently I only have five. <sighs> Not. But uh, I thought I'd pick the five that I could think of that were pretty big and they stick in my mind or in my husband's mind. I did ask him for his ideas, uh, but he's been busy working so he can't make the video with me. <clears throat> Usually that's when I do these or it's when during work hours and he's working. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So number one, um, way back when, in 1996, we got married and we got a huge lump sum of money um, and I think after expenses and everything was paid for, um, we had $4,000 in wedding gifts. Crazy, $4,000. And instead of putting this into anything good, well I shouldn't say anything good, instead of putting this into a mutual fund, a GIC or a money maker of any kind, we decided to buy a computer. Um, the two of us had... Well, I had a really old desktop that my mother had given me back in the early 90s. And my husband had one, I think he bought it in 89 or 90. Yeah, I can't remember. Mine would have been older than that though. I don't know. So anyways, we had old desktop computers. They were getting old even in the 90s when computers didn't uh, grow in memory or in speed or anything as quickly as they do now. <clears throat> and it's funny, we spent $4,000 on a laptop. And the reason we got a laptop, <clears throat> laptops were fairly new. But we figured I'd go in the hospital, I was still in college, and a laptop would help me so that I could keep up with my homework while I was sick in the hospital um, from the cystic fibrosis. So to us, laptop was great. We spent $4,000. Now I can't tell you what the computer was, my husband would, but he regrets it because nowadays you can get a cell phone that is three times, four times stronger, faster, better than that laptop in particular, and it'll cost you maybe a thousand bucks. I think my last phone was only 500, but or my current phone that I have now. Um, but yeah, I, it, you can't see into the future. But you know what? We should have done something better than bought an item. That's my regret. We should have put that money away for savings, whether it was into some money maker. Again, GICs, mutual funds, RRSPs. Even we didn't start an RRSP until many years later. <clears throat> Um, my personal regrets not going on a budget sooner. I would write up these budgets in the last four or five years. <clears throat> That's only when I started doing budgets, but I would never follow them. I'd write them down, but writing them down means nothing if you're not actually following through. A budget is nothing if it's on paper. It's pretty much just a dream until you're actually doing it. And that's where the issue is for a lot of people. I'm not the only one. Um, one thing that I regret early early on in our uh, marriage was uh, we didn't curb our everyday spending so I went um, 96 is when we got married in 98 I had my first born and I kept spending like we had a two-income family we were no longer a two-income family we hadn't been for a couple months before she was born because I was on bed rest but yeah so you know going from I can't remember maybe it was four thousand dollars a month I really honestly don't remember it was so long ago down to two thousand dollars a month say is a big chunk to lose and I was spending and of course I was bored at home about a month after having her so what am I doing every day I'm going to the mall and walking around and I'm shopping and I'm buying so <clears throat> that was one thing that we as a family or as a couple should have done much much sooner and we did it so I do regret not curbing our spending when our wages had been cut in half or our income had been cut in half I didn't get to go on that leave, we, um, and I think this is a ripoff. I think I totally got ripped off, but this is looking back 21 years later, or 19 years later. Um, I was told I couldn't go on mat leave because I started my mat leave before I had my daughter, which I found out years and years, like maybe 10 to 12 years later, that's false. You, um, if you are on mat leave, or if you have to stop working because you are pregnant, you still can apply for mat leave and you still get mat leave. Mat leave is only 40% of your uh, wages. So, you know, if you make $1,000, you're only going to receive $400. It's not a lot, but it's better than a kick in the butt and getting nothing, which is what I ended up doing. I got nothing. I did apply and I was told I couldn't get it because I uh, went on uh, mat leave, I think a month before she was actually born. And I remember being in the hospital and having a conversation with a social worker and she was telling me, what, you're in the hospital? And I said, yeah, I just had the baby yesterday. And she's like, you can't have it. And I'm like, what do you mean I can't get my mat leave? She's like, because you applied 
and you only have the baby now. And I'm like, what? So I believed her. I was only 19, or sorry, 20. I was only 20 at the time. No, I was 22. Sorry, I was 22. I was young. I believed her, and I shouldn't have. I should have looked into it. I should have questioned it. Not every social worker knows their job well, and not every social worker has been at their job for a long time. Maybe she was new and didn't know all the ins and outs. Either way, I lost out. Again, that's just something we should have curved our spending when our paychecks have been cut in half. Um, another thing is uh, getting a lease. Dave Ramsey likes to call it, you get fleeced when you get a lease. And I really don't understand the fleece part of this quote. But um, we had bought used cars up until this particular car. It was a Mazda 6. I think we bought it in 2005. So it was a 2000. No, we bought it in 2004. It was a 2005. I don't know. I think we bought it in 2005. It was a 2006 model or something. I don't know. But it was a brand new car to us. It was our first car, <clears throat> brand new. Um, the cars before had all been used, and we ended up with the lease. And after the three or four year lease, I can't even remember how long it was. Um, we didn't even have the money to buy out the car outright, which was another mistake. Uh, I remember when we first got the car, we said we'd put money away so that we could buy it out because we knew what the buyout was going to be right from the start. And we ended up not doing that. And so we had to take the car loan to pay off the buyout. So that was like the longest loan known to man for a car, I think. Because if it was three or four years plus another four year loan, ridiculous. So we paid like eight years for a car. Ridiculous. <clears throat> We should have waited too, because the car that we had before, we ended up selling to a friend of ours who ended up selling it, had it, being it for a couple of years, sold it to another friend who had it for a couple of years, we sold it to his father who had it for three more years before he, he parked it. Apparently it is still running, it just needs a tune-up, but he parked it because he stopped driving. So really we could have had that car for at least six more years. So we could have waited to buy a new car and we did My last thing, and this is important to anybody, I don't care how old you are, if you are time job and if your company offers this it's the company pension um, we didn't do a company pension I didn't know it was even available because I hadn't looked into any of this um, even before I think we started the company pension before we started going to this debt-free uh, journey or debt-free living and doing a budget and stuff but my husband found out way too late and if he had started off from the beginning we would have a lot more in our RSPs um, than we do currently because they match whatever we put in so he has a company pension I have no idea what goes into it it's there it's set aside and we get it at 65 or 75 I can't remember anymore but because they take out the money every paycheck you don't notice um, that is one thing also that I wish I had learned sooner and this is a tip from the wealthy barber is to pay yourself first so take out money as soon as you get payday have your bank account do it automatically and I do this now every payday get your money pulled out whether it's 50 bucks 25 bucks even or a hundred bucks or a thousand depending on what you can afford just pull out money every day into a separate savings account and that's what I have happening with my emergency fund my emergency fund is over a thousand dollars I believe it's at 2100 now but I don't notice the money missing I pull out a hundred bucks every month and this goes into my emergency savings fund and I'm not David Ramsey would say no don't do it put that extra hundred to debt but I find this way I don't even notice it's missing it's not even part of my well it is part of my budget it goes into my savings but we don't notice it so it happens immediately on the same day that we get paid and that's what we do and I think if I had learned this much sooner we'd have a much bigger emergency fund um, also we probably could have paid for some things um, through that fund um, sooner instead of paying now or sorry buying now pay later we could have paid now and enjoyed it and not have any debt so those are my uh, five financial regrets what are your five financial regrets? I'd love to know, hear about it. Um, comment in the comment area below. If you have any questions or anything you want to know about me, let me know also below and I will talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I think the buzzer is here. And also, uh, I will have a video for you somewhere here. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget. You could subscribe by looking at my little saving piggy bank here. Also, I'm going to link up a couple more videos, I think, over here, here, 
anywhere in this page and link on those and maybe I'll have a playlist for you as well. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Tell your friends about me. Talk to you soon.